As someone who's taught moral philosophy for more than, well, I don't want to say more than 20 years, almost 20 years, I can say with some authority that we could be doing a much better job teaching our kids about right and wrong, about basic ethics. And I have immersed myself in the literature of sex differences, and I can say this as well, um, that all children need to be brought up with clear and distinct rules. They need structure. But I also believe boys need this even more than girls. Uh, boys who are ethically neglected have some very unpleasant ways of getting themselves noticed. Uh, and if you don't believe me, I mean, just um, have a look at some of the ways, uh, you know, the outrageous things that uh, boys, little packs of young males, uh, can act. Um, it's not that girls are more moral than boys. They're not. I've looked at the data quite carefully, and girls can be just as vicious, if not more. Uh, but cross-cultural studies confirm the obvious. Boys are more physically aggressive. Uh, there's a classic study of male-female differences by um, Eleanor Maccabee and Carol Jaclyn, uh, where they conclude that compared to girls, boys engage in more mock fighting, aggressive fantasies, they insult and hit one another more, they retaliate more quickly when attacked, and they say, quote, these sex differences are found as early as social play begins. And there was a 1997 study at the University of Vermont which compared parents' reports of children's behavior in 12 countries. I mean, they, these re researchers went to Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Sweden, Thailand. In every case, boys were more likely than girls to fight, swear, steal, throw tantrums, and threaten others. Well, I think that Gloria Allred, the feminist lawyer I talked about, and Gloria Steinem, and the authors of Sun's Day, and the, the experts at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, I think they look at these hitting, chasing, swearing, competitive creatures and see future criminals. And I just see boys. I see high-spirited, energetic, creative boys in need of developing a code of ethics. Um, it, I mean, history teaches us masculinity, constrained by morality, is powerful. It's constructive. Uh, it also teaches us that masculinity without morality is terribly destructive. So every society confronts the problem of civilizing its young males. Now, the traditional approach is through character education. Help uh, a young man develop his sense of honor. This is so important to boys to have a sense of honor. Um, and society has to provide them with positive ways to achieve uh, that the kind of self-respect and, and, and um, male pride. And if you don't do it, uh, he'll find another way to, I mean, the, even gangs, are, you know, s s pl operate in an antisocial way to appeal to, to boys. Um, but Actually, what I'm saying is we have to find ways to turn young men into gentlemen. And I, in, in the course of doing the book, I would ask boys from all walks of life. Uh, I'd go 14, and, and I and encourage you to do this. Go to a 14 or 15-year-old boy. I did this with uh, Orthodox Jewish boys in Brooklyn. I spoke to farm boys in Ohio, surfer guys in California, uh, some African-American boys in Georgetown, all, all walks of life. I would ask them, what does it mean to you to be a gentleman? And I have yet to meet a boy for whom, a teenage boy, for whom that doesn't connote something positive. You see that it's something they want to be. They really do. They don't know exactly how to do it. I wouldn't, if I am sure if I ask more questions, I might be disappointed. But it, it's, a, it's powerful for young men. But it is not the same as trying to change them into girls. To, change, to, to, to turn a young man into a gentleman, you help him develop a sense of responsible manhood. Um, I think what the what the Save the Male reformers are doing is quite different. They are trying to civilize boys by rescuing them from their masculinity. Uh, as I said, Gloria Steinem says, raise boys more like we raise girls. My feeling is that that's disrespectful of boys. It's probably not going to work. It'll make them more angry and resentful. And we have a method, which is tried and true, which tried and, uh, I mean, time tested and effective. I, I want to end on an optimistic note. Um, I've been somewhat critical of feminists um, in this talk, but the subtitle of my book is How Misguided Feminism is Harming Our Young Men, not feminism. There's a more generous and humane feminism that I very much in, in, embrace. And last year, I, er, I guess by now it's a year and a half ago, I came across a book entitled Between Mothers and Sons, and this was a collection of stories by feminist writers on what it was like to have a son. And when I first heard about this book, I thought that it was going to be 
depressing. Uh, they were going to tell stories of how they tried to, just, tried to save their sons from the patriarchal, oppressive society. And I, I figured I'd feel sorry for the boys whose mothers disapproved of them. Anyway, the book surprised me. I mean, these are stories about wonderful mothers rediscovering the nature of boys and delighting in it. Uh, some of the mothers confessed that they tried to educate their sons according to strict feminist precepts. Um, one amusing one was a, a short story writer, Deborah Gallian. Uh, she described what happened when she sent her son Dylan to a Montessori preschool, which she says, quote, was run by a goddess-worshipping women's collective on Cape Cod. All right, so she sends little Dylan to a goddess-worshipping collective. And this is what she writes, quote, something about it did not honor his boy's soul. I think it was the absence of physical competition. Boys who clashed or tussled were separated and counseled by peacemakers. Sticks were confiscated, confiscated and turned into tomato steaks in the school garden. Uh, I, she says, I think I sent him there to protect him from himself. So she becomes worried about that. She tries to figure out, how can I, this is a quote, how could I, a good feminist, a good pacifist, be a mother to a stick-wielding, weapon-generating boy? And then she has an insight. What exactly is a five-year-old boy? A five-year-old boy, she says, is a beautiful, fierce, testosterone-drenched, cerebrally asymmetrical humanoid, carefully engine engineered to move objects through space or at least to watch others do so. And just one other <laughs> example is Janet Burroway. She's a poet, a novelist, a self-described pacifist liberal. Well, she had a son named Tim who grew up to be a career soldier. And she can't understand what happened. Uh, she looks back, uh, you know, and she remembers he had an abiding fascination with plastic planes and toy soldiers and military history. Uh, so she says his direction was early set. She describes taking him to fields of daffodils and so he'd celebrate nature. But now she looks back at a photograph and she says, um, I can see the contours of the hunter's face. Anyway, uh, but she's, she loves her son and she's taken aback by, by his capacity for chivalry. And she said he would literally lay down his life for a friend. She says, I'm forced to be, or, or a cause. She says, I'm forced to be aware of my own contradictions in his presence. I'm a feminist charmed by his machismo. These mothers discarded their anti-male prejudices when they discovered that their sons had their own distinctive virtues and graces. And I think the love and respect they shared for their sons led them to overcome their own prejudices. So that's my suggestion, is that as a society, we should follow the example of these feminist moms. We should rediscover the goodness of boys. We should stop treating the Dillons and the Tims um, and the Boy Scouts as if they were afflicted with a disorder called boyness. It's unfashionable to say so, but I'll say it anyway. I think that the adventurousness and energy and stoicism, competitiveness of normal, decent males is responsible of much that's right in the world. All societies have understood this. All societies have appreciated and prized their young men. I mean, why in this day and age should we be turning against them? And I, I hope you agree that makes no sense. But if you're an optimist as I am, um, you believe that good sense and fair play will prevail. And if you're the mother of sons as I am, you know that one of the more agreeable facts of life is that boys will be boys. Thank you.